Lewis Hard Parking, proudly sponsored by Right Honda and Right Toyota out of Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm your host, Jay Bing, recording from my hotel room in Grapevine, Texas. My voice is gone. Last night, we did the banquet at NS Expo. It was great. I was yelling on stage, and so I can't freaking talk. So coming up on today's show, we're not going to do an NS Expo recap. We're going to wait till next week to do it because I have a special guest, Mr. Jonathan Rivers from Acura, decided to come to the conference room after the banquet and spill everything about Acura, all their plans. So we're going to get to that. Maybe I'm telling the truth. Maybe I'm not. But I do have a lot of takeaways from the trip. And again, you're going to hear about those next week. But if you want to learn about him, you want to learn a little bit about the brand, and maybe we get into or don't get into the EV, maybe a third gen NSX, maybe a new S2000, maybe I'm completely full of shit. But you're going to find out all of that and more after this word from Four Wheel Online. For over a decade, Four Wheel Online has been bringing the best truck accessories and truck parts to enhance the appearance and performance of all trucks and SUVs. They are dedicated to providing an extensive range of upgrades that will match any maker model on the road. The truck products cover everything to give your truck a custom look and added functionality. Need a wheel and tire package? Head over and use the configuration tool. They carry all the major brands of wheels and tires, so go get outfitted today. Visit them online at Four Wheel Online. Guys, we're sitting here with Mr. Jonathan Rivers of Acura. We just got done with NS Expo. Well, actually, we have an event tomorrow, but we just got done with the main banquet. I was up on stage acting a fool. The banquet was long. The auction was long. I tried to make it fun, and hopefully he had a good time. But Mr. Rivers, I'm going to call you Mr. Rivers. Oh, God. <laughs> well, welcome to Hard Parking, man. Hey, no, thanks for having me, Jay. I really appreciate it. Of course. So let's get through the boring stuff first, okay? So let's talk about where you work and what you do, and then we're going to get into the fun stuff, your life, stories growing up, some fun car stuff, but nothing that you can't talk about, okay? Because, again, guys, this is I have an accurate guest here. So we're not going to ask about a new NSX. We're not going to ask about a new S2000. We're not going to ask about anything that hasn't been unveiled yet because you can go to Jalopnik, which is John's favorite uh, – favorite blog post right <laughs> in uh in auto blog so like tell us where are you from okay because i know you have a good background and then also just tell us a little bit what you do for uh, acura okay uh well yeah originally i'm from uh from michigan the motor city uh born and raised uh went to michigan state so go green spartan go go spartan uh, we did not do good tonight though we played michigan I don't know. I don't know. oh that was today yeah But hey, uh, there's always next year. So uh, yeah, I, when I was in school, I did uh, economics and Japanese, ended up uh, going to Japan on a study abroad in, in college, fell in love with Japan. So came back, graduated, moved to Japan, lived there in total about five years. So picked up the language, uh, came back, uh, kind of bounced around in a couple jobs, but got into the auto industry. And particularly, I got into Honda in Ohio. So I was working at their research and development facility uh, just outside of Marysville there. And it's funny because given where I'm at today, I look back and my first job in the company almost 15 years ago was a Japanese interpreter. That's hilarious. That's how I got into Honda. So people ask me all the time, like, what did you, what did you do? How'd you get it? I was like, I was speaking Japanese every day. So... Uh, I used those skills I picked up, um, but at the same time, that job was really cool. I got to learn a lot about development and how Honda, you know, you know, designs their vehicles. Um, from there, about a year later, I, I got another position doing project management, uh, and that's where I got uh, really lucky because, again, those Japanese skills helped me uh, to get onto the uh, NC1 NSX project. So I got to literally see that car from start to finish uh of the development so i spent you know five years of my life a lot mm-hmm. of a lot of blood sweat and tears on mm-hmm. that one uh but through that project i i met a lot of um co-workers out in los angeles you know decided some dad want to move out there maybe try out you know new job so uh that was around 2015 i moved out uh to be the Senior product planner for Acura Sedans. That's what it was at the time. Now, if you remember 2015 Acura lineup, it's not today's Acura lineup. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, I, all we could do was go up. So there sure. was it was a it was a unique op- opportunity though because it wasn't just working on a singular car. We were trying to 
you know, really change the brand, right? And go back to precision craft performance. We were getting ready to launch the NSX. Um, so for me, I had several cars that I was working on, but over the years, um, you know, kept at it. The brand took off. And then, yeah, I was able to kind of put my name on a few products. Like most recently, I did the the TLX and the TLX Type S. Nice. And then my baby, the Integra and the Integra Type S. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, all the sedans, all the cars, bringing manuals back, uh, you know, and things like that. So being a passionate car guy it was like a, kind of a dream job. But I've since graduated. A lot of people maybe don't know. I've kind of moved on. And now I'm kind of in a management role. I kind of working with. Uh, all the design specs and features and assets and things that we put online. So I'm kind of managing a team that does that. Moved on is it really. So when someone moves on, that means they really leave stuff, you know, like really behind. We we call it, we like to call that a promotion. Okay. Mm. Now, were you in Marysville then in 2014? Yes. It's funny because, you know, this NS Expo was my second event. Um, the first one that I went to was the one we did in Ohio when we were still finishing development of NC1 uh, in Marysville. So that was that was an awesome event because I know we got to take people through the factory. Heck, PMC wasn't even done yet, but we got to take them through Marysville, and then they got to go to TRC, the, the, the kind of proving grounds for the research and development facility. And I just remember everybody really enjoyed that event too. So you just called it proving grounds. And I've always heard it. Is it proving or probing? Oof, uh, I've said proving. Oh, is that, am I saying? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. I mean, myself. you're the expert, but well, that was my first NS Expo, actually. Hey, so you were there. I was there, right? That, I'll uh, pull up the pictures here in a minute because I saw Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And so we got the big picture of the blue car. Yes. Yeah, the blue car So yeah. in, in the lobby. So I, I was there. Um, and then, you know, they closed downtown Marysville. Yeah. Yeah, the mayor came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was pretty crazy. That's also okay. the first time I met Peter Cunningham. Well, then I'm sure we met then, but it was just probably, you know, there's a lot of people. You were there. one of the people, right? Because I remember Klaus was yeah, there. Yeah, Ted. Oh, and Ted. and there's a guy we have here named Mele, and okay. he goes to all of them. Okay. And what I remember is Mele was basically shouting at Ted about the NSX, the new one. <laughs> you know, just like, dude, just about the manual transmission and all that kind of stuff. And I just had to step in and make jokes and just separate those guys. But man, that's uh full circle. Well, sorry, so we're, Cause, I mean, here we are, here we are doing hard parking. Yes. Cause most people ask people on there, you know, it's very guarded because the company, the mother company can be very guarded. These things. I tell a story. Do you remember Michael Cow? Oh yeah. That's my guy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I met him there as well. Yeah. I actually ended up teaming up with him on my NSX project, you know, a little model car you saw today. Uh-huh. So he 3D printed the interior pieces. Uh, a full stop. I actually, you know, worked with Michael on helping to get his little company up and running that does nice. 3D printing. So funny again. Yeah. ICD3 printing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that was wild. But so I interviewed him and I gave him like 30 questions. And there were innocent questions because I, I remember I told you I'm not an I got you podcast. By the time I went to whoever has to look at it, it came back a completely different thing. Man, I tell you, so that's how I know how cut and dry they are. So okay. thank you again for sitting in front of me and being right. candid. So, okay, we got all the boring stuff out of the way. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about your life. You you grew up in Detroit. Yeah. You know, tell us about that. Tell us about the diversity, some of the fun challenges, because this is a brother sitting in front of me. They got a job interpreting for Japanese. I mean, at what point were you like, I'm here versus I have no idea where I'm going to be? Let's go back to the beginning, man. Okay. No, hey, look, that's, uh, and you know, as I look back, it is, it is really interesting. No. Um, yeah. So I grew up, uh, yeah, I, you know, birth certificate says Detroit, but I'm not going to sit there and, you know, be like I lived in, you know, I'm not from eight mile, right? You know, right. I, my parents did well. They worked hard to put me into a nice area. So we were in the suburbs and, nice. uh, you know, went to a nice school and, you know, a diverse, eh, as diverse as it could have been in the, in the, you know, eighties and nineties. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, you know, through that though, I think, um, you know, being in like a, uh, a school system that had, you know, you know, it was very, co you know, common for people to go to really prestigious universities, get like perfect scores on their SATs. So like the expectations were there that, you know, you're going to do well. Right. And so, you know, look, I wasn't, a, I'm not a 4.0 kid. I wasn't doing all that, but 
you know, the things that I was really interested in, I, I think I excelled. Like, so for me, I actually tried in middle school to like do Spanish. I even tried, I even did a year of French and I, okay. I, I no, horrible in both. I mean, I, I know like three words in both languages, but Japanese for whatever reason, I think I just had this affinity for it and it just clicked. And like, I was like all in. So uh, I think part of that was like, you know, people don't maybe know this about Michigan, but there's you know, actually quite a big Japanese population there. Right. And a lot of idea. No. And I mean, I, in in the moment being so young, I didn't know, but now it makes total sense because what it is, is all these Japanese companies and suppliers that support the big three in Michigan, you know, they're sending expats over just like, you know, we do at Honda and Acura and they're bringing their kids and their family. So I'm going to school with their kids and things like that. And the the kids that came over, at least back then, you know, they didn't have really much English ability at all. So, and at, at the time, I had no Japanese either. So it was kind of like right. <laughs> high five and, you know, hey, hope everything's cool. But through that, I, I, I learned a little bit about the culture and, and things like that. And yeah, it just clicked. Yeah. I mean, what's, I mean, at what point, right? Because you're in high school. You know, whether it's nice high school or bad high school, then none of that matters because you are where you are. But, I mean, did you always know what you wanted to do? No, no. And so, like I said, I mean, I, I think I've, uh, anyone asked me, like, you know, how did you get in your job? Like, what did you do? And, like, what was the path you took? I, I have to tell people. I mean, it's, 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 um, there real, there was really no idea for me. I never said I want to be some plan out vehicles and, and work on Acura. I mean, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was passionate about the brand and cars and but I, I didn't know that that was even a thing. Right. And and I and so and so now, you know, I'm pretty uh, I'm on LinkedIn a lot. I I'm, I'm posting on there and and through that I feel like I get lots of people that see some of the accomplishments and things like that and they reach out and it's great. I always love being a mentor to people and helping them out and people always ask, Well, yeah, like, you know, how did you get in this role and what did you do? And like when I tell them my career path, they're like, Oh, <laughs> cause it's, cause it's not direct at all. Like, and, and honestly, I think that's one of the craziest, if not best things about this, you know, American Honda, the company is that like so many of us that have been there for a long time I and mean, we've done, you do it, you do, you kind of do everything. And ultimately, yeah, you might land in one area longer than the other, but it gives you a, a wide viewpoint on the business and the thing. So, so what's been like, what are the things you've been most proud of? on your journey in the automotive industry where you look back, you're like, yeah, as I was a part of that. Yeah. There's a, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch, I'll, but I mean, everybody just, has a favorite, man. Just one, uh, man, that's tough. Okay. Just one. No, nah, look, I mean, and it's one of the more recent, but it was the Integra type S, right? Because I had to fight for that car. I uh, had, you know, obviously it's not just me, right? I'm not trying to take credit for everything. There's a whole team. There's, you know, hundreds of people that work on the development of something like that. But given being the, the product planner for the car, yeah, I had to I had to push Japan. I had to <clears throat> work really hard with the engineering team to, you know, have them create the product that we thought was going to be, you know, best suited for our marketplace. And that's always a challenge, no matter what the car is, right? Because they live in Japan. Sure, and yeah. Japan is a lot different. Than you say it's different. Yeah, I mean, how they use their cars, if they use them at all, right? I mean, Japan, you know, mass transit is a thing everywhere you go. So, you know, here in the U.S., where you know. It's, you know, a two car household is like just the standard. And then there's people that got <laughs> four or five, yeah. 10 and however mm-hmm. many cars, right? That that's not a thing in Japan. So, so, and you know, especially as it comes to some of these enthusiast products, right? You know, they, um, they even take a different, you know, look on that. So, um, so yeah, I think finally for that car to come to fruition and then for the, you know, the, the customers, the media and everybody to like it as much as they did, that was a proud, proud dad moment for me. That was cool. So. It, it's cool. I feel it felt like the Integra kind of just came out of nowhere because I went to Monterey. Okay, and, yeah, I was they, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, they, and they did the show. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, this is cool, and all the people that live in the area are probably calling the police because they thought there were UFOs in the sky. <laughs> but there was nothing, and then there was the Integra, and then there's people who didn't receive it as well. That everyone, you know, the keyboard commandos. Well, why couldn't oh. they give us a coupe? Why can't it look just like the old one? Oh man, because John Acadia told us. The re- the real reason why cars don't look like they used to is because the design and the standards have changed. Yeah. You can't have the super low hood. You can't have all this stuff. You, you can never have the same 
DC2 and Tiger as they had back in the day. No. Nope. Cars just get bigger, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of design issues. Uh, but do you hear a lot of people complaining because there's not a coupe? Yeah, well, so, I mean, here we are, and, you know, now I've even got my own Integra Type S, and, you know, the car's been on the market for a it's little bit. It's a great bit. car, by the way. Oh, I love it, man. It's so much fun. You know, it's, but it's funny, now that it's been, it's just out there, and there's thousands of owners, and people, and the Mariam, and everything else, there, it's like a part of the community. If you look at the general sentiment now, it's nothing but positive. But, 100%. But, yeah. I, but I'll tell you what. So let, let me tell you this quick story, right? Cause this, tell as many stories as you want. Uh, uh, right. That's yeah. why I'm here, right? Yeah. So No, but this this one threw me for a loop. So this was the um, the reveal of the Integra uh, prototype, the yellow car, right? So from my perspective, I, it was very interesting because that morning, right, we had the venue downtown all set. Cars looking great. Everything's good. So that morning we had uh, the dealer body come in. That was the first time they got to see that car in person. Uh, they walked through. Man, after they got out of there, they were like, oh, this is a home run. They were like, this this is what, oh, we were set. And for me as, as a product planner, a guy who works with the company, if you hear like dealer people and sales people talking like that, you're you're golden, right? Because they, <laughs> they, because they have to be motivated, right? If they like... They feel like confident they're going to sell it. So I was geeked. I was like, yes, we're in Pretty good shape, good. right? Yeah, yeah. So then after that, this is like mid-afternoon, we had media come in. So all those publications you just mentioned, Autoblog, Motor Train, everybody sure. comes in. Motor One. Well, everybody, yeah. they're there. Yeah. And for the first time, they get to see it. And I'm not kidding. Everybody I talked to after that, they were like, oh, this is, man, you guys crushed it. This is great, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like. I'm like cloud nine. I'm like, this is going to be amazing, right? So then, you know, we get to the evening and we have the reveal because it was going to be streamed online, uh, streamed online, and it was a live reveal. Like, it was kind of, admittedly, we kind of threw it together last minute, which is why it maybe didn't come as smoothly across as it should have. But, you know, what happened is uh, after the live reveal, we got done, and I even did this little walk around in the car, went online. And I, you know, I'm kind of like, Sitting back, thinking everything is fantastic, right? I had a couple of coworkers come over. They're like, "Hey, have you have you seen social media yet?" And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no. I was like, "What are you talking about?" They're like, "Oh, you shouldn't look, man. You shouldn't look." And I was like, "Really?" I was like, "About what?" They were like, "People were writing stuff about the car," and I was like, "Really? What are they writing?" So I go out live. I mean, look, I'll just preface it with I got thick skin, right? None, none, of, the, none of that sure, stuff yeah. bothers me, right? So so I'm looking at these, like, comments online, and it's just horrible, right? Horrible comments about the car, about me. My name no, came no. up in comments, as did Ikeda. Like, I don't even want, want to say on the podcast what right. people were writing, but sure, they were like, yeah. like name-dropping. That's how angry people were. And I was like, wow, like, what happened? Because... Everybody I talked to this morning was cool. So, like, that was really interesting for me. But fast forward about three months from that, because that was, like, in November. So then, like, the following, like, February, we showed the quote-unquote production car. It was literally the same car. It just wasn't yellow. Right. And it didn't have, like, you know, black wheels and yellow calipers. I mean, there's a couple. But, I mean, fundamentally, the car was the exact same as the yellow car we showed everybody. And you know what was so crazy to me was like I started talking to media and then looking online and people were like, oh, it looks great. They fixed it. Somebody actually <laughs> had the audacity to come and say, hey, did you change the tail lights and the? And I'm like, bro, it's been like three months. You think we could like do that in three right, months? Right. I'm like, no. This is what. What do you mean you like it now? So it it was just funny. And and to your point, it's like people get a little emotional, get real passionate, and you know, oh yeah, everybody has an opinion. Well, and again, I think when you can hide behind a screen right. and in a screen name, and right? You are not talking here like people like this, where you can hear the, you know, the 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 challenges, the the real story. It's uh, it's it's a lot easier to go off like that. So then, and fast forward three months from there, now the car is getting ready to go on sale, and so we're at we actually did the media event here in Texas. We were in Austin though. Okay, and I'll never forget that too because um, the drive event went incredible like with without a hitch the reviews come out and tegra's back six speed manual fantastic blah 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 right they just it's and so yeah i had this moment where i kind of like stepped back and i was like you know what this is it, all good you know after going through a little bit of 
trial and you know you know issues with the with the launch it it worked out fine and then it just got funnier after that right now you fast forward six months and we're going into the next calendar year and it's the um north american car of the year and the car is not only nominated but it wins it literally won car of the year i didn't in the industry and i a full circle moment for me was it was Guess what? They 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 handed out the announcements in Detroit. So I flew back to Michigan, my hometown, to go and accept the North American Car of the Year for this car I was able to work on. And so that was, yeah, a really cool moment. That's awesome, man. And, I, and I'll tell you, because I don't know if people get upset at me, because I try to look at stuff from a realistic standpoint, right? And I say, okay, that's the production car. That's the grocery getter. This is before the S. Yeah, before the S. That's, and the people are like, why can't it look like this? And they show you a picture of uh, an Integra Slam with Regas on it and a body kit. I go, it can, you know, yeah. but like if you're going to compare cars, it's the same thing with the NSX. Show me the base model production car next to a base model production car. Don't show me something that's so heavily aftermarket modified and try to compare because. Apples and oranges, because all you have to do is put wheels if you want, suspension if you want, some added arrow if you want, throw a couple stickers on there for more horsepower, and people are gonna love it. <laughs> it, it you couldn't uh, you couldn't have put it better, and that's what was so funny to me because 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 look, you went back and you were like talking about the coupe thing from the beginning, and I've said this on the other interviews and stuff I've done about the car. It's like we didn't want to do a retro car. It wasn't even from day one. It wasn't even in the thoughts. And this comes from a guy that learned how to drive stick shift on a sure. 98 Integra GSR with the four headlights. Oh, like, my, like the first one that I said tonight. Yeah, yeah. that was, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that was a story I told at the media. Event. I was like, guys, you know, coming from that background and that mindset that we still did not want to recreate that. Not because that car wasn't great or not that you couldn't try to recreate it in a modern version, but. We started with a blank sheet and we said, look, there's some elements, right? There's some fundamental things that we want. Like we want it to be a lift back. We want to have a manual transmission. We want it to be a great value. So that it's kind of the every man's, you know, sure, sports yeah. car, right? Things like that. And then let's kind of feel it out and see what, what comes about. And so, yeah, for me, like the fact that it was a five door when that's what the Integra launched as five door in 1986 when the right. car launched i was like i was like i had to pull out wikipedia and show people they didn't believe me i like dude that's literally how the integra launched as a five door lift back of course there was a three door version as well i'm not ignoring that right but to be like that's not an integra I've never yes, seen. i was yes. like dude it's literally the same thing <laughs> yeah why can't it look like this i was doing the same thing I go, okay here is the four door original like, look at this yeah look at this it was Nobody back then really loved it that much. No. We wanted the GSR, so give yeah. us some time, right? Give, give us some, some time. time. Congrats on the success of that car, though. It's a oh. great looking car. And then when the S came out, oh man! So then that everybody was... just was like, "Holy shit! This should have been like this from the beginning." I was well, like, you got to work up to it, man. You know, and that was the thing is like, you know how so how we work, right? And I, and this is what I can say is like we we're developing cars, you know, five six years ahead, right? right. So. Yeah, I was, we were already done with the S when the regular car launched. We just couldn't show it or talk sure, about it. Sure, okay. Right? Yeah. So, like, so for me, I'm even more on cloud because I'm like, <laughs> right. you like this? Right. Just I'm wait. like, just wait till next year. We about to, you know, knock this out of the park, right? And yeah. so, so yeah, that was really cool knowing that, that, was, that we still had that in our back pocket, right? And then, yeah, when that came out, it's just like game over, right? You know, uh, performance car of the year, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. great, great stuff. So was okay, so, so we'll fast forward to right now this okay. weekend, and I'm thinking this as you're talking. So I'm sitting in front of the father, essentially of the Integra Integra Type S, and we had basically the father of the Civic FL5. Yeah, yeah. Did you guys did you, did you feel any like a little angst of competition? A little bit like yeah, like, you know, your car is pretty cool. I mean, my car is pretty cool too. <laughs> you know, no, it's funny. So I I know him well. Uh, but and but that was a question that came up because people asked like, um, you know, which car came first, or you know, how like you said, how did you deal with that? So honestly speaking, again, if you think of it from a timeline perspective, no, that the FL5 Civic Type R was already. I was say done, but it was well far along before we even started working on the Integra Type S. 
which is why we were able to leverage a lot of the technologies in the right, platform right. and the powertrain, things like that. But what I knew we had to avoid was creating something, creating a product that was so close to it that A, it would just cannibalize the sales of the Type R, or B, not offer enough differentiation at a higher price point where people wouldn't think it's worth it. And, or even see that, yeah, I mean, ultimately just kind of looks the same with the Acura badge. So I was like, we got, if we got to avoid those three pitfalls, which I think we did pretty good, right? I mean, it's kind of raw and, you know, great performance like type R, but it's also an Acura. So it's dialed back and, you know, has more plush ride, you know, more features, um, different look and feel. The styling is very different from FL5. Uh, the sound is very different for right. FL5, right? So those are all these things that we were, we had to prove that out to our, our leadership that we were going to do this so that they knew, okay, it's a separate thing. Yeah, man. I mean, both cars are great. I would love to have either. I don't need either. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My wife will tell you that I don't need either. Yeah, she's, yeah. But I've driven, I haven't driven the FL5, but I have driven the Type S. Okay. Your your type S, your integer type S, and it, it's everything about the car is super cool. I'm excited with the you know the future of the brand because there's a lot of controversy out there with cars. Period. Mm. The future of cars is, and so we'll just have to wait and find out. Um, but you've had a very diverse upbringing, and a lot of the stuff you've done. I know you're a football fan because you just said that earlier. Yeah, as well. I want to talk about college football because it's college football season. It is. It is. So we're going to be pivoting all over the place. But I, I didn't realize Michigan and, and uh, Michigan State were playing today. So when I grew up here, this is a pro sports town. There's TCU in, Florida, I mean, in Fort Worth, but this is a pro sports town. And when I first moved to Michigan, I, I lived in Grand Rapids. There were no pro sports. But all my friends loved college football. Oh. And I didn't like college football. You know, I just like NFL. One night I'm sitting in the living room working on something and I see a game on TV and they go on to like six overtimes. I think it may have been Tennessee and Alabama or something. I was like, wow, this is great. Yeah. So then I started getting into college football and then I started getting to the Michigan, Michigan state thing because okay. that was a big deal. Like that's all my friends. Deal. Ah. And that, that's how I got hooked on college football. I'm a diehard Texas Longhorns fan. Okay. I grew up here, but it's weird because I didn't watch it when I was here. Um, you know? Yeah, yeah. But today was so busy. I forgot to even check until on the elevator. I'm not gonna lie. I was. I had it going during. Oh, the did you? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's it was fun. on my phone. I was like, I can't not not watch it, you know. But yeah, they lost at the end. They lost by a touchdown. So okay, well, you know. that's. I mean, it's, Michigan's down. Yeah, this year I know, but you know, Texas beat Vandy, Vanderbilt, and Vanderbilt beat Alabama. But it was it was like twenty seven to twenty four. And so I was trying to check the box score earlier, and I couldn't get around to it because I just, I just, yeah. You actually were on stage. You had things to do. I'm just sitting there, like at my table, like, hey, I've never for just completely forgotten about the game. It wasn't until I was on the elevator afterwards, I was like, oh, Texas played today. Oh yeah, that's right. Did they win? Oh, thank God they won. Yeah, you know, because they're kind of down. But how long you been into that? Are you just kind of are you casual enough to where you never nah. rooting, or do you like okay, well, this year. So and so is going to be good, and if he's not good, we got a backup. Then we got a backup to the backup. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm pretty invested. You know, it's to be fair, it's been a minute since I've been back on campus and like gone to an actual game. But yeah, I mean, even from my days, you know, in in school, I um, I I would go to the games. I would you know regularly go to the games. Um, and as much as uh, you know, to like you said, be you can be all over the place here. But I love college football, but. Actually, my heart is college basketball. Oh, and that's uh again Michigan State, Michigan State, and yeah, they Izzo. You know that's yeah. that's a thing, and and I and I'm really lucky, right? Because when I was in school, we won the national championship. So, and I sure. actually knew some of the basketball players on the team. I was in the dorm with with some of those same guys. Uh, so it was a a really cool time actually to be in school, right? Because. I had to think about it the other day. I was like, man, the only other time that's happened was back when Magic Johnson won in the late 70s, right? So 79, they won. 2000, they won. And they haven't won since. So when you think about a school like that that's got 50,000 people and how many people have come and gone during that time and didn't get to experience yeah, that during yeah. their time like that was really special right like so I, I i don't take it for granted at all like i knew i was there and like things were different like the the energy on campus 
the excitement, the parades, you know, after they won, all that stuff. I was like, man, this is a cool time to be here, you know? So did you tear up the town? <laughs> Were you part of that? Uh, I did not tear up the town. I was there when okay. stuff was getting tore up. And literally, if you like go back now and Google, like it's a thing still like that. Yeah. Because it was it was bad. It was bad. And I didn't partake in that. Actually, to be fair, the year before. So this must have been the um, 98, 99 season. So that was my freshman year. They went to like the final four and they lost to Duke. And then, yeah, they almost burned the campus down. Like that was, that was the bad one. I, I was, I was there. I didn't yeah. take, but I was there. That was bad. The next year, 99, 2000 was the year they won the championship and they did not burn the campus down. And it was much better. And police relations, everything was much better that year. Uh, so that's funny. Yeah, so that's that's when I moved to Michigan was 99. Okay. Fall of 99. So I was like, wow, these people are freaking nuts. Yeah. Well, they- <laughs> well, that's always that joke is you don't want your college, you want your college team to win, but you just don't want to be in the town when they do it. Right, yeah. Because Vanderbilt, did you see that when they, was it Vanderbilt? Who, was it Vanderbilt that won and they, they dumped the goalpost in the Oh, like in the, the river? river? Yeah, just yeah, something. Yeah, crazy, there's something right? crazy like that. I'm like, how did they, they, they carried they- a goalpost <laughs> from the football field through the city yeah. and dumped it in a river. Like, like miles. My, like two miles away. Like, how is that possible? How are they going to stop? But, you know, kids kids are going to be kids. When we first moved to Arizona, I went to, we don't do this anymore. Because, you know, when you first go somewhere, you're just like, oh, I'm going to do everything. And then you stop doing it. We oh, yeah. hiking and stuff. We went to some ASU games. And ASU football is boring. Uh, yeah. Like, it's, I don't care. They can go 9-1. and one, It's still boring. But they had to be Washington that year. I think Washington was number five. And I was at the game. And I just sat there and watched the kids kind of push past all the security guards and just, you know, rush the field and everything. It was crazy to see, man. It was crazy to see. But I still got to get to a Longhorns game. I've never been to one. I went okay. to Red River Rivalry. I always wanted to go to Michigan, Michigan State. Never made it to one. Yeah. You know, I wanted to go to the big house, you know, and, and watch them play Ohio State or the horseshoe. Never got to go. Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, that was the crazy thing, too, is, you know, since I started my career in Ohio, you know, I would sometimes go to the, you know, Horseshoe and the Buckeye games. And, yeah, it was always funny because, you know, people would ask, you know, where are you from? And I'd say, Uh-oh. Michigan. Yeah. And they, they would just give me the worst side eye. they just uh-huh. make, And I'd be like, whoa, no, I went to Michigan State. Then they're like, oh, oh okay. Oh, that's yeah, not, you're cool. Yeah. yeah, that's not so bad. Like, we share the same enemy kind of, uh, you know, smile there, but. Uh yeah no I, I look man I'm, like you said college sports football basketball it's uh it's great energy man I mean like I like the pros and stuff too um you know but honestly like you know they're 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 just kids right and right there's a lot of pride man it's, it's a lot of it's, pride and the 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 band starts playing you know and the, all that I I got addicted to it also playing um EA Sports NCA football oh yeah you know turn the TV on it's like there's nothing like it man. Uh, before we pivot here, what, in your opinion, for football, for college, is the what? Name your top three rivalries. Oof, and football, and yeah, college football, because basketball is probably easy. It's probably easy. Uh look, I mean, look, Michigan and Ohio State. I mean, that's, right. that's yeah. horrible. Um, mm, top three. This is this is heavily debated, and if and if those are your teams. You probably don't really even look beyond that, right? Right, and I would say like Michigan, Michigan State, but it, 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 it's the it's the it's one of the best in state rivalries. The Michigan Ohio State's one of the better out of state rivalries. Right. Um, I mean, what else is there, right? Doesn't uh, that's all that matters, right? Well, for me, yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah. biased here, but, but no, I'm sure in the rivalry. I'm sure in the West Coast, what it's like USC, UCLA. I think it's USC, UCLA, right? Well, it's, it's both um, teams aren't. You know, right? Uh, Texas, Oklahoma. There you go. The the SEC guys, Auburn, Auburn, and Alabama. Alabama the that's Iron the Bowl. Yeah, yeah. They'll so. swear it. And yeah, and then down in Florida, it's either well, it used to be Florida State, Miami when oh. I was much younger. Okay. And both teams just kind of you know aren't aren't any good now, so nobody cares about those rivalries. <laughs> yeah. What was your? This is a generic question, but I I need I want to know the answer to this. Yeah. You know what? We're going to move back to cars. What were like? Your dream cars, what was your, I, I call it your, your poster 
car, like your wall poster car. And I don't know if you're, I mean, I'm an old man, man. I don't even know if you're old enough to, to remember those oh, days. Oh, yeah, poster on, store. On, okay, man. all right. Yeah. What were your poster cars? Um, My poster car was a 1997 Dodge Viper GTS, the blue with the white racing stripes. Like Lucas Grown has? Wheels. I saw it. Yeah, <laughs> you joke. I saw it. I was like, "Dang, it yep. still you know tugs at my heart." You know, I was like, "That's that's a thing." I re- it really, you know what? I mean, like I said, I was being in the Motor City and you know American Muscle and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But man, the Viper man, that huge V10, and you know, they get the first generation was kind of quirky, but by the time they got to that gen, right. where it was like you know the bubble top and the you know that kind of like the snake tail that they had in the back. I think they were really coming together and like they went from the, you know, side exhaust because it would burn your legs. Burn your leg. Right. Yep, and then they yep. put it in the rear and the car just, it, the, the design came together. It's, but it has still awesome performance in that V10. So for me, I, you talk about a poster, I actually like to draw. And, and so I actually did this huge, like almost poster size sketch slash you know i was using like colored pencil and stuff of that car i don't know if my parents still have it in the closet somewhere but that was a thing for me i really was so did you uh did you think you're going to design cars at all you know it's funny so from that i actually showed my art teacher and he was like damn man you're, you're pretty good and he's like, well, do you want, do you have interest in this? Do you want to do this? And I was, and I didn't know. Again, I didn't know. That's I, a hell of an art teacher. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, I mean, but I didn't even know, like, he didn't phrase, like, how do you phrase it? Like, hey, you could someday design cars. I actually probably would have went down that path. But, you know, he's like, so let's work on it. So I actually put a, like a, like a portfolio together. And there's a school in Michigan called the Center for Creative Studies, CCS. Oh, yeah, CCS. CCS, yep. yes, right? So yep. that's like the main Midwest East Coast school. And obviously, you got the- Opposite uh, of Pasadena. Pasadena, right? Our own creative director is a product of that and teaches there to this day. Um, so, yeah. So, no, I actually really strongly consider going to CCS. I, I mean, I don't think I would have got a full scholarship, but maybe I could have got you know some money. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't have the vision to to think that that was a job or a job that I could do. And so t- com- combining my fear of being like a starving artist with also my interest in wanting to learn more about Japan and potentially the language, that's what pushed me into a more traditional school. It's a great answer. With all your successes, man, what, what pushes you? What keeps you motivated? Uh, just as a person, because work is work. Yeah, no, no. I well, I always I tell people I'm like, don't tell me no, because if you tell me no, I will prove you wrong. <laughs> I will come back and get it done. Because um, I mean, and, and I look at it right. It's like the Japanese, right? I remember, I remember telling people when I was like really young. I was like, no, I, I, I want to learn Japanese. And they're like, Eek. no, Japanese is so hard, and you know, it takes too much time, and you know, you're not gonna learn. And that's fluent. Now, don't worry about that. Eh, da, 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 da. And I was just like, mm-hmm. okay, just. Just watch, you know, and that's been my, that's like my, my, my motto, right? It's like, just watch, you know, if you want to doubt me. And, and I, and I think part of it is, you know, I had, you know, I felt like I had to have that kind of um, drive and, 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 and mindset, right? Being a young black man, actually. Right. right? I mean, it's already so darn hard for us to begin with. So, sure. so I knew that. You know, there was going to be a lot of doubt and a lot of people that wouldn't believe in me or think that I could get things done. So it was a, there was always this drive to prove people wrong that I could get I could do these things. Right. Absolutely. So what do you like? Like, what is what is Jonathan Rivers favorite thing to drink? How do you unwind? Ah, uh, you know, what? Uh, it's funny. It's changed over time. But now it's more uh, like whiskey, bourbon kind of stuff. Uh, given the the affinity with Japan, I like Japanese whiskey. Sure, yes. yeah, the Yamazaki. I got, oh yeah, I got a few bottles at the house. And yeah, can't get this stuff anymore. So I'm like, I, it's not even open. That's the problem. But uh, no, on, on occasion, yeah, I, I like to sit back and uh, unwind on that. But um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't I don't overly drink. You know, I think at I this, mean, sure, yeah. No, I think at the no, I feel like it's just yeah. You know, so I'm. I'm I feel like I'm getting older. It's just like, you know, you don't recover like you used to uh, after a few nights of, of that. You're just like, I'm done. So, yeah, that Yama's out there, man, but it's so expensive. Hibiki is so expensive. I've got one of those too. I've got, 
and again, this isn't for anything of bragging purposes, but it's just the advantage of, you know, I, I had connections in Japan and they would get this stuff for me, but I have, let's see. So I think for Yamazaki, I've got the 12 and an 18 and then the Hibiki, I've got a 21. Oh, which okay. Is, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that one's, that one's not getting open. And then uh, I think I've probably still got like a Hakushu and maybe a couple others. So Hakushu, that that stuff is good, man. Yeah, no, I've got several, but I, yeah. so the problem is you you look at like my little bar and I think I'm like an alcoholic because I got all these like whiskeys right. and stuff, but none of them are open. It's just it's more for the fact that I I've tasted them at some point and I and I like them and I know they're now like hard to get. So it's more about it's almost like collecting versus oh, sure. versus drinking, right? Like I'm gonna send you a picture. I have a friend here that got me into it last time i was in town in 2019 i spent the night in his house before i drove back and as soon as i walked in his entire wall was full of whiskey mostly japanese whiskey oh wow and what he does is he doesn't buy a bottle he buys everything they have yeah you have to yeah so he's got 30 of uh like mccallan classic cut Uh, he's probably got 15 of these Hibiki Harmonies and the Master Select from Travel and the, the, the Travel Exclusive Bottle. And it's just, my wife did not like him for a while. Because <laughs> I came home, I was like, honey, because I was traveling all the time. And every time I'd go to New Jersey, because they, you know, it's a, a lot of it's regional, the availability. So I found a few spots in New Jersey. And at one point, I had 18 bottles of booze on my work desk. And I would just slowly take them home every week in my carry on. Or I didn't carry on, I checked them in. And left like my work shoes on my desk and stuff like that, you know. And after a while, I was like, oh my God, I got to stop. But, you know, I love a lot of the Japanese stuff. Uh, you don't do any vodkas, gins, tequilas? No. American no. bourbons? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, what's the other? I mean, I drink like Macallan or whatever. Sure. It's easy stuff, to drink. Yeah, stuff like that. But no, I mean, no, nothing, nothing over the top. And yeah, like I said, I've definitely. You know, you got this Eagle Rare right here, which is yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, the Eagle Rare is good. It is, it is, yeah. So, no, yeah, the bar closed early. I was like, damn it, <laughs> can I get another one? So, I have this Glen Karen in front of me or a Glen Karen looking thing and see if is it really Glen Karen? Yeah, and it's I actually left this there at the banquet. Oh, really? So, so yeah, one of the organizers ran over here to me. Oh, that's nice. But I was just so frazzled just trying to get everything done after the end of the banquet, I just completely forgot about it. It's been a long week, man. It's been a long week. Well, thank you for being on Hard Parking. I really appreciate it. It's been great talking to you again, you know, throughout this weekend. And hopefully we can see you at more of these NS Expos in the future and and talk and maybe run into you out and about somewhere at one of the other events. Well, well, hey, thanks for having me. I'm going to do a shameless plug here. Dude, plug away. before before away. Before we drop off. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, through the corporate job, I, you know, was tasked to do and then ultimately got pretty good at was like doing product explanations and product walkarounds. And so earlier this year, starting about the first week in January, I started my own YouTube channel. Okay. So it's called Drive Culture. You just go and good search, name. search for those two words. Uh, it'll pop up. Click that bell to subscribe. But uh, no, it's it's great. I mean, obviously I, I've been reviewing or a, a lot of Honda Acura products, but uh, I've got some non-Honda and Acura stuff on there. Got some vintage cars on there, so uh, so yeah, uh, definitely check it out. Hopefully, you're, uh, you know people listening in might might give it a shot as well. So, well, you know what? I mean, now that you've said that, I've got some follow up questions. <laughs> we're not done, are we? Yeah, we're not. In order. We'll, we'll be done. We're not done now. So, reviewing these non Honda Acura products and some of the vintage cars, what's been your favorite that you've done so far? And you don't have to have too many, you know thoughts on it just because if people really want to know they can go check out the channel but you know just what's been your favorite so far and, and maybe your least favorite oof you know it's funny um yeah i mean there's i we were we're, we're you know we're doing a video every week so every friday a new video drops so even though we started in january we're almost like the 50 videos right we've, wow. got, we've got a lot of content on there now so between that um look i was lucky enough where like some friends you know have some nice cars sure, and they're like yeah. And it's so funny too. They're like, you know, oh, you got a YouTube channel? Like, here's my keys. And I'm like, bro, like, you would not have let me drive your car like six months ago before I had this channel. That's but funny. It's, it's funny how that works, right? Yep. So, you know, but no, thanks to all my friends and family that have supported it. And yeah, you know, one of my friends has a uh, a 718 Cayman GT4, right? Okay. So yeah. that's on the channel. 
and uh, he was nice enough to let me use it for the channel. So that that's pretty. Uh, that sets the bar pretty high. That's a nice uh, car. Yeah, that's like a, a that's like a track monster and, a, and everything monster. Yeah, well, and it you know, and that's the whole thing in the video. I mean, it revs to eight thousand one hundred wow. RPM, and in this day and age, you know, that's right. that's yep. not a thing anymore. So, uh, so that was fantastic. Um, I also had a friend put a BMW M2, uh, the new uh, G eighty seven for the Beamer people out there. So. Uh, so that was also unique. Again, manual, luckily, because I know they make that with the uh, auto as well. Um, but then on the cool side of going back to some of the vintage cars is, um, yeah, I, I have, uh, you know, the uh, collection hall for Honda. They've been great. They've been letting me loan out some of the- Oh, that's old, cool. Yeah. So I have a yellow, I have their yellow ITR on the channel. I mean, that thing is pristine, right? Is And so I got, I was lucky enough to put that on the channel, Um we we have a 91 NSX that's about to drop bone stock great condition we also had a 99 prelude uh SH on there so that check that one i saw your eyes perk up on that one so yeah yeah so i actually wanted a prelude okay and i couldn't it it cost a little bit more than we could afford and that's how i kind of found my way i actually wanted a prelude i wanted an accord and they were expensive cuz they're kind of like luxury starter cars yeah and then I was like, oh, I guess the Integra is pretty cool too. And that's actually why I, my first car was a 98 Integra GSR because I couldn't afford the Prelude and decided I didn't want the four-door Accord. Yeah. Because they were two or $3,000 more at the time. So that's funny. That's why I'm like, oh, because looking back now, you know, who who won the race, right? Because we all like our old Hondas and Acres, but man, people love the DC2 Integra. Oh my God. Yeah. Hey, wait, 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 what color was your car? Brilliant. Uh, flamenco black. I think it's the color okay. for it. Flamenco black. Yeah. Okay. And I actually totaled it. Oh, no. Like seven months later. And here in Dallas, by oh, the way. Oh, God, yeah. And, and and then I bought another black one for 99. Okay. Yeah, my it was actually the, the car I learned to drive stick shift on. It wasn't my own. It was my cousin who's, I can't believe to this day, he was crazy enough to let me learn how to drive on his car. But he had that dark, you know, that '90s Honda and Acura green. I, I, oh, I know the color. color. You know what I'm talking. I know about, the right? color. Yeah, dark green and the beige with the, t- yeah, the beige <laughs> tan interior. Yeah. 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 right. That was that total '90s spec. But uh, man, that that that's that car and that manual. That's what changed me. And maybe uh, want to go JDM for sure. Well, good deal, man. Let's get out of here again. Okay. Uh, drive culture, yes, sir. Drive culture, uh, Mr. Johnson Rivers. Thank you so much, and well, we'll be talking. It was an absolute pleasure, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank Jonathan Rivers for joining the show. Again, if you want to follow his new YouTube channel, it's Drive Cultures. Make sure you guys check that out. And as always, these conversations are brought to you by The Cell Shop, an Arizona-based retailer that strives to be your destination of choice for wireless services, whether Arizona, Washington State, California, Texas, and Florida. They are an authorized AT&T dealer, so visit them at cellshop.us and get connected today. And so with that being said, I want to thank Wright Honda, Wright Toyota, Toyota Punnington Beach, Claremont Toyota, and Gardenia Honda, ProLoneLine.com, the aforementioned Cell Shop Wireless Services, Auto Cannon, officially licensed Honda and Accurate Gear. Special shout out to Auto Cannon. They helped me out in a huge way with NS Expo. They were awesome. They came through. Go to Auto Cannon, sign up to get on the mailing list and get access to exclusive swag. Can't forget Patreon business supporters, Kuya Automotive out of Winter Garden, Florida. I saw RJ this weekend. Automotive Specialty Tool out of Owings Wells, Maryland. I saw Ramsey this weekend. Pell Construction out of Caledonia, Michigan. Beak House Small Home Design out of Ashford, Virginia, and Traverse City, Michigan. And of course, we can't forget Shaping Success with West Tankersley catches on One Drink Wednesday, every Wednesday, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. If you're in a position to help the podcast upgrade, join the Patreon for as little as $3 a month to get access to bonus audio as well as show swag. Special shout out, of course, to Mark Stolman, Catherine Cox, Eddie Ramos, Richard Graves. Saw Richard Graves this weekend. Byron Jones, Bo Jung, Alice Gamina, Drew Bunkley, and Yasu Chiba. Yasu, you have to get over here, go to NS Expo, so make it happen. I'd love to see you. Questions, comments, concerns, hardparkingpodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram at jfinning. Join the Hard Parking Violations Facebook group. Join the Hard Parking channel. And if you're really feeling crazy, you can follow me on X at jfinning. TikTok, Hard Parking J. And remember, I can't grow like you tell the world how great the show is. Let's do this. Let's grow this thing together. And I will talk to you next week with a better voice. Shut up!